Hello everyone, good afternoon and welcome to uh, Keto Living with me and welcome back to my channel. And for all of those who are tuning in for the first time, welcome to my channel. So Keto Living is all about sharing my journey with keto, ketogenics diet and sharing yummy recipes with you. Um, as I know many of you have started this diet as well. So today is a long anticipated uh, recipe. It is lasagna. And so we are going to make lasagna and we're going to make our own homemade noodles today. And that's what we're going to get started with. But first I want to give you a tip. If you're on the run and you have to go somewhere to eat, um, I hate fast food, but um, I, on occasion I find myself having to stop through a fast food place. Well, if you go to McDonald's and order um, their new grilled chicken sandwich, the Pico guacamole sandwich um, without the bun, they put it on a nice lettuce sleeve and then you have your chicken and your little bit of Pico and guacamole. And I think it's only about maybe four net carbs or something like that. Anyway, I'll insert a picture of it right here. So... Let me get that up for you. Did that not look yummy or what? And it really actually was very good. It was very filling. And so um, I'm finding that most restaurants will accommodate you on your diet. Of course, our favorite one is Longhorn Steakhouse. Um, they're really accommodating, at least the ones around here. So now we're gonna get started making our noodles. And for this, you're going to need two eggs. You're going to need a fourth of a cup of grated Parmesan. You're going to need one and a fourth cups of mozzarella cheese. You're going to need four ounces of cream cheese. And then, let me check my notes because I wrote all this down so I wouldn't forget. <laughs> um, you're going to need... Um, a teaspoon, no, a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, a quarter teaspoon of onion powder, and a quarter teaspoon of Italian seasonings. And I just went ahead and put them all in this bowl. And then you're going to need a mixer. Um, and I'll show you that in a minute because you want to hand mix this. It's not something that, I mean, you want to use a mixer, not just hands. So let me put you down here and so you can see, hold on. Okay, we made it. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is you want to cream your cream cheese and your eggs together. I'm just gonna pour those in there and stick that over there. And, whoops, sink, be washed. You guys know I'm not the neatest in the world. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start it slow first. But loud, sorry. Okay, so then we're going to mix in our Parmesan cheese and our seasonings. Nice and smooth. We just get this off the beater right quick. Okay, and then we're actually through with this because we are going to do the Parmesan cheese by hand. And let me get my uh, excuse me. 
Thought I had it out. My rubber spatula here. I'm just going to scrape the sides of the bowls down. This sure smells good. <laughs> okay, so then we're just going to fold in our cheese. You don't want to mix the mozzarella with the, um, the blender because it'll make a mess. So you're going to mix this all together. And my hands are clean, but I'm the only one eating this. So. <laughs> okay, now we're going to bake our noodles. Put this to the side and get our pan. And we're going to turn our stove on to 375. to get hot. So you're going to want to put this in a 9 by 13 baking pan and you're going to want to line this with parchment paper. This step is very important. You will not be able to get your noodles off if you don't do this. Okay. So we're going to pour this into the pan and we're going to use our spatula to spread it all out. Now this is not quite like the dough we make for our fathead pizza. Remember, we're making noodles. We don't want to make bread. I'm just trying to get every drop of it out. Okay. And then we're gonna take our spatula and spread this evenly amongst the pan. Sometimes I think it'd be easier to use your hands, but this is messy. I didn't do a great job of tearing my parchment paper, did I? Oh well, it'll be all right. It's all right. See, now what's gonna happen is that when this bakes, it's going to spread out some more and you're going to get a sheet of a noodle. Then after it's through baking, we're going to put it in the fridge for about 20 minutes and it has to sit for us. This is going to be divided into thirds. It's a little messy to work with, but it will eventually spread out like you want it to. You just have to keep working with it. You just want to make sure that you have some everywhere on the pan. Cover up all your little holes. And there's plenty to cover up all your little holes. It's just a matter of working with the batter and smoothing it out. and it will eventually all smooth out. Oops. Okay. That looks pretty good there. We got all our holes covered up. I'm just going to scrape this off and get it all into the pan. Okay, so I'm going to put this in the oven for 300 at 375 degrees for about 20 or 25 minutes. And then we'll take it out and I'll show you what it looks like before I put it in the fridge. So, as soon as it gets done, I'll be right back. Okay, guys. So, this is what it looks like when it's finished baking. And it's going to have to cool off before we can put it 
um, slice it up. So I'm going to put this into the refrigerator for about 20-25 minutes and then we'll get started on the actual meat and stuff that goes into the lasagna. Okay guys, so I thought we'd go ahead and get started with the filling. And what you're going to need is one pound of beef. Now I do use grass fed beef. It is a little bit more expensive but it's totally worth it to me. So I'm just going to put that in my pan. And then we're going to put in a teaspoon of the following seasonings. A teaspoon of basil, a teaspoon of onion powder, a teaspoon of oregano, a teaspoon of garlic, and a pinch of salt and pepper. And that goes in here. But let me break up my pan burn meat a little bit. I got this from my daughter from Pampered Chef. And I love this thing because it just really does because it does a good job breaking up hamburger meat. And it doesn't scratch your pans and stuff. And it was for breast cancer awareness, so they donated the profits from this to breast cancer awareness. So I felt good about that. Okay. So you're gonna need this. You're gonna need these seasonings, and you're gonna go ahead and brown the hamburger meat with the seasons in it. And I'm going to turn that on, move us over to the stove. And then you're going to take some baby spinach because the request for this was spinach. So we're going to put baby spinach in, but we're not going to put that until this cooks and when we put three quarters of a cup of the sauce. Now let me tell you a little bit about the sauce that I use. This is the sauce I use. It's called Rose Homemade um, Tomato Basil Sauce. Now, I was looking for the lowest possible um, carbs, net carbs of sauce. And um, I discovered this one. It has three carbs per half a cup and one fiber, so it's two net carbs for a half a cup. However, this is, are you ready for this? <laughs> this is $9 a jar. <laughs> It was where I bought it. However, it is really, really good. I am going to contact the company and tell them that I'm using their product and they need to send me and my subscribers coupons for this. So anyway, um, if you do the one, a red, just a regular tomato uh, marinara sauce or whatever, it's going to have about four carbs, four net carbs in it. So I wanted to make this as low as in carbs as possible. So that's why I did that. Okay, so hold on a second and I'll take us over to the stove. Okay, so I'm back. So all we're doing right now is we're going to brown this. And I'm going to continue breaking this up. And then when it starts heating up really good, I'll come back. I mean, it's not very exciting watching me break up hamburger meat and, you know, browning it. <laughs> so when I have something to show you, I'll be back. Okay, guys, so I'm back, and I got everything browning right now. I don't know what happened. I thought I started the camera back a minute ago, and it went bleep on me, and I'm not sure what happened. But anyway, all I'm doing is wilting in some baby spinach now. Because the person that requested this recipe wanted spinach. And, it, and so I am cooking it with my um, hamburger to wilt it down. Now you can buy frozen spinach. And frozen spinach is probably the best bargain on the market for the money. Because it takes a lot of spinach to do a pound of spinach. After it's been cooked and everything. However, I like fresh organic spinach. And I couldn't find any um, frozen so, now I will tell you, if you use frozen, you have to thaw it completely and then put it in some kind of cloth that you don't mind getting stained and squeeze out every bit of the juice. If you don't, it will totally ruin your lasagna because um, you want all that water content out of there. So, that is all my spinach. 
And that was a whole carton of spinach. I'll break that little twig off and see it just melts right in. Okay, and then how much fat is in there if I want to have all that in there. I'm going to drain a little bit of the hamburger fat off because there's a lot. Usually I use lean hamburger meat, but this time I used 80-20, which has more flavor, and that's the reason why I used it. So hang on a second. I'll be right back. Okay, we're all drained, and... I am going to pour in three quarters of a cup of our sauce. And we're going to put that in there. And we're going to let this simmer for a few minutes. Actually, you need to let it simmer for about 10 minutes with the sauce on about low medium temperature. Excuse my arm. <laughs> As I'm adjusting my camera, I mean my stove. Whoops, man overboard. Okay. So while we're waiting on this, I have a little surprise for you. Hang on. Okay guys, so since last week we missed a week too, I thought I would give you something for dessert with your lasagna. And this is the quickest, easiest recipe ever. Instead of peanut butter cookies, we're going to make almond cookies because, you know, almond's more Italian than peanut butter. <laughs> Plus, almond is lower in carbs. So, almond butter is a lot lower in carbs. And these cookies are amazing. But not only that, you will be shocked at how easy this comes together. So, all we're doing is taking a cup of um, almond butter and I use this right here. It's the uh, uh, Maranatha, no sugar or salt added, no stir almond butter. Because, I mean, you know, everybody needs dessert. And this is Friday night. And, well, it is Friday night for me. I've, um, I had a long day today, as you know, if you watch my morning devotional. <laughs> So I'm just trying to get all the goodness out. Okay, I think that's about all the goodness I'm going to get out. Then it's a half a cup of um, erythritol. Uh, you can use Swerve. I, I've been using the new Splenda Naturals, this right here. Um, that has the stevia and um, erythritol mixed. It uses a different part of stevia and it doesn't have any aftertaste is very good so you're going to take a half a cup of that start mixing that in with the that oops i forgot to take a fork and beat my egg and then you're going to take one egg slightly beaten And pour in there. That's all the ingredients, guys. I'm not even kidding. And you just mix it all together until it becomes a dough. And you might not think it ever will, but it will. big two pans. Normally you can get about 15 cookies out of here, but my little 9 by 13 pan is a little small. And I'll tell you the reason why it's a little small, I mean, for these, because I filled the pan up last time. I made exactly 15 cookies, put them on the pan, because I didn't think these little suckers would rise or anything, because it's just almond butter, an egg, and a little erythritol. 
and I couldn't understand what would make it rise. And yeah, so they rose and they spread. That's okay. I just cut them apart. All right, so I'm gonna put this over here. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is get my little nine by 13 baking sheet. Yes, it's the same one that I baked my um, noodles in. I just slid them right off the pan into the fridge. So we're gonna do that. And let me get my cookie scoop. Excuse my. Okay, so I'm using about a medium sized cookie scoop. And I am only putting it in here until it's flat and even. So I don't wanna to put too much. And then I'm just gonna scoop, scoop them on the plate, on the pan. And I'll probably bake half and then bake the other half. Because like I said, they do spread out. Which I was totally amazed that they did. Alright, puppy dogs, behave. My dogs have seen something out there to bark at. I shared the last batch of these I made with my neighbors. Um, and they all loved them. I tried a recipe last night. I created a recipe for keto um, cheesecake, so I'll be sharing with that with y'all real soon. I had to have live human sample, you know, samplers for that. Ooh, that way too much. Get that off of there. Put one right there. So just with this little pan, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine cookies. And you just put these in the oven at 350 degrees for about, oh, I don't know, eight, 10 minutes. Depending on how high your oven is, it probably won't take mine that long because I have um, uh, my small oven, which is uh, what I'm baking them in, because I'm gonna bake my lasagna in my big oven. My small oven is a, um, yeah, one of those things. Convection ovens. So I'm gonna put these in a 350 oven and let this bake. Mine will take about eight, 10 minutes. Let me set my timer. Okay. Wash my hands. Now, here comes the fun part. We're gonna put together our lasagna. Move the cookie dough out of the way for right now. Okay. So we're going to put together our lasagna now. And we're going to get our noodles out. And we're going to get some... Uh, I think I'm going to use avocado spray on this one just to just to spray my pan a little bit so it doesn't stick. So I'm using it's um, or 100 pure avocado oil spray. I get this at Publix. It's organic. Alrighty, spray that. Now what we're going to do is take a knife and we're going to cut this in thirds to fit into our bowl. And the pan you want. Is an eight, an eight by four by six by two inches. So two inches deep, eight inches long, and four inches. Now mine's a little bit bigger than that, but I'm not gonna worry about it because I think it'll work. So we're just gonna take this out here and cut this up going to be perfect. And then split these two in half. Perfect. Okay. So move this off to the side here and let me go get our meat. Okay guys, so I'm going to try to make room and get everything in here, but I do have a small little <laughs> kitchen. All right, so we're going to put um, a quarter of a cup of our sauce on the bottom. 
Because you know, every good lasagna starts with the sauce. And I didn't warm that up, it is straight from the jar. And then we're going to put our first layer of our noodle down. I cut that one a little small, but I'm not going to sweat about it because I'm still going to eat it. Or maybe I should have put the big one. I don't care. Anyway, then you're going to put a third of the mixture, your hamburger mixture in the pan on top of that. Because you know what's going to happen when this reheats? That cheese is going to melt some. It'll probably spread out a little bit. But if it doesn't, I'm not going to sweat about it. All right. Then you're going to put three tablespoons of ricotta cheese, real ricotta, full fat, not low fat. Now, I, the recipe calls for six tablespoons altogether, and that's because you're going to put three tablespoons on each layer. Let me get this thing open here. And, of course, I had to buy the biggest container of ricotta cheese for six tablespoons because... They didn't have any full fat ricotta cheese except for in the big container. But I'm not going to sweat about that either because I'm going to find a recipe for it. So all I'm going to do is straight from this thing, I'm going to dollop, spread that out over the mixture. Usually you put it in with your hamburger meat. I usually do, but it says... You know, I'm finding that if you do, it kind of gets lost. And I, my hands aren't clean, guys. But there again, I am the only one eating this. Okay, so tablespoon number two. And I guess you could spread this out a little bit. But I don't mind getting my hands in it. Because it's going to taste good. I'm so excited about this. My mouth is watering. But I wish you could smell this meat mixture. Oh my gosh. It smells so good in here. All the Italian smells going around. The basil. The garlic. The oregano. All my cheese. Oh man. Okay. And then you're going to put... After you get that layer of ricotta cheese on... Let me rinse my hands off. You're going to put about a fourth of a cup of mozzarella. Now, I'm not going to be that picky about it. You know, I'm just going to put it over until I cover it up. That looks about good. Okay. So then you're going to take your next layer. Your next layer. See, my pan is a little bit wider. If you have a narrow pan, it's going to fit better for you. But there again, I, I'm not going to sweat it. Because it's still going to taste good. Okay, so then I'm going to take another, about another third of the mixture. And put that on. Just spread it around. All that yummy goodness. Oh my gosh. My mouth is just watering. Cannot wait. And then we're going to have cookies too. Mm -mm -mm. Now, this serving, they said it serves about four people. So you cut one, two, and then three. But I don't know. Like sandwich slices about like that. So you're supposed to get four servings out of this. We'll see. But since I cut my um, sauce down... Instead of 9.5 carbs, it has 7 net, net carbs, 7.5 net carbs. Okay, so then we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to put 3 more tablespoons of ricotta cheese on it. See, I don't know how I would spread this out. I borrowed this from a recipe and I adapted it to taquito. <laughs> so... There's lots of recipes out there I found when I was looking and stuff. But I didn't, I mean, I love zucchini, don't get me wrong. But I did not want 
a zucchini noodle. I was trying to make this as close as possible to real lasagna. And I felt like zucchini noodle wouldn't make it close as possible. Now, I mean, these noodles are not, they don't have any kind of flour in them, so that's not, um, it's not real, but it's close. It does have eggs in it. <laughs> okay. Let me wash my hands one more time. Now, we are not going to put any ricotta cheese on top. I just dropped that in the pan, didn't I? Let's put it over there. Because ricotta cheese does have um, two carbs per fourth of a cup, which is a fourth of a cup is uh, three tablespoons. So, you know, you got two servings in there and... Okay, so I, I'm going to take my spoon and just spread that out a little bit more. Oh, I guess it does spread, huh? Okay. Now we're going to take our another fourth of a cup. Hang on, guys. Our cookies are done. And you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to make a crisscross pattern and flatten them out. <laughs> That's okay. They didn't spread as much this way, but oh my goodness, don't they look good? Now you have to let them completely cool before you take them off the pan. So I will fix them up in a few minutes and show it to you. But we're gonna put our lasagna in here. Hurry up and put our lasagna in here. So we're gonna put another fourth of a cup of cheese. And then we're gonna put our last topping, our last noodle on top. And then to make this exact, like to, I guess to, um, get it to fit the size easy it would be good to put it in a loaf pan and i had thought about that but i decided i didn't want to put it in a loaf pan i'm just going to put it in a casserole dish and like i said it does not bother me if it's you know not quite whatever now usually i don't put meat on top of that you know I just save a little bit extra on top. Okay, so now that's on top. What we're gonna do is take the rest of our cheese, which it should be a fourth of a cup. But there again, I don't know. Now, the recipe didn't call for this, so this is totally optional. Um, if totally optional because I thought about it and my mouth was watering for it and I thought I, I got some grated Parmesan that I had left over from making the um, the egg noodles or the noodles with so I'm just going to sprinkle a little Parmesan on top as well because you know what? I like cheese. And honestly, if you did a fourth of a cup of Parmesan, it would add 110 calories to the whole thing. No carbs. And 8 grams of fat and 9 grams of protein. But I will have all, everything mixed out. And I didn't add a fourth of a cup. I probably added about an eighth of a cup right there. Alright. So now... The last thing we're going to do to it before we put it in the oven is sprinkle it with some Italian season on top. And you're going to put a whole teaspoon of that. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do... Ouch, 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 ouch. Hot. I am going to put this on a baking tin. Because, just in case something bubbles over, I don't have to clean my oven. So, let's put this in the oven at 375 
for 20 minutes. Okay. Set my timer. Now. Let's look at these cookies now they cooled off. Now, I usually make crisp puzzle. Y'all, look at that. Oh, my gosh. That was, that, uh, it's just all I can do to keep biting my tongue. They smell incredible. Let me clean up this mess right here. Okay, so the only thing I'm going to do now is to clean up the mess a little bit. And when the lasagna comes out, I'll show you lasagna. Plus, I'll have the rest of the cookies baked. So, I'll be right back. Okay, we're finished, guys. And here's the meal tonight. Lasagna and almond cookies. And, and you can see the difference between, like I flattened these out somewhat and these I didn't, but you know what, they taste good because one broke, darn it, and I just couldn't have a broken cookie on the tray, so I had to eat it. <laughs> so you need to let this sit for a few minutes, just like you do any lasagna to firm up enough to cut it. And, um, <clears throat> It is so hard for me to wait. I am going to take a slice out of this, and then I will be sharing the rest of it with my neighbor. And if she doesn't want it, then I will be freezing the rest of it. So, um, I'm thinking that we could get six pieces, six big pieces out here. Cut it down the middle, and then here and here, because it's pretty thick. And I can't remember on the regular recipe if I adapted it and it served four or six. But um, it's usually four of the recipes I find because I don't like cooking big recipes that, um, you know, because it's just me. So, anyway, we're going to let this sit for a second while I talk to you. So close your eyes, I'm lifting you up. We're going in. Okay, forgive me, it's warm in my kitchen now. <laughs> it is definitely warm, Whoa, excuse me. I am spinning you all around, aren't I? Okay, so, if you watch this video to the very end, I know it was a rather long one, but I didn't wanna make part one and part two today. So um, all of you know, or most of you know, if you've been to my channel before, that I started selling doTERRA oils. So, if you sat through this whole recipe watching my videos, then um, I have a little giveaway I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna give away either peppermint beadlets or on guard beadlets, okay. Peppermint beadlets are good for, um, you can take them internally for respiratory problems, um, digestive problems, and then you can diffuse them in the air to help you breathe. And I don't have an on guard beadlet because, <coughs> excuse me, the little lady that I've been taking care of is sick and her, like I said, her son was having surgery today. And so this past week I didn't want him to get sick. And so I let them borrow them to make sure that he stayed healthy enough to have surgery. And on guard is, is what it is. It, it, it boosts your immune system. It protects you from getting colds and things like that. And you can use it in a spray bottle. You can use the regular oil, a few drops in a spray bottle um, to disinfect things. It's just an amazing product. And so that's what I've been using. And I've been working with her sick for two weeks now. And I haven't gotten anything. So anyway, okay guys, let me grab a plate right quick. And we're going to see how this does. I am going to slice down the middle. Ooh, it cuts really good, guys. And then slice across. And then slice across again. So I'm making a, a six portion out of this because, mm, that's good. <laughs> um, I'm not sure I wanna eat big heap portions. I'm finding as I'm on this diet longer and longer that I can't eat as much as I used to. Okay. Now, y'all know the first piece is never pretty. 
But I want to show you something. Look how pretty that looks. Oh my gosh. It's lasagna with spinach. So, Teresa Merritt, I hope you try this recipe because you're the one that requested it. Oh, let me tell you what I'm going to do about this. Okay, so I don't want people reading the comments and figuring out this, okay? If you've watched it all the way through the end, I really want people that watched it to win your choice, and I will order it and have it sent directly to you. Um, so if you watch this video all the way through, email me at atdonnas at yahoo.com. My email will be in the description box. All right, guys, thank you so much. Remember, 7.5 net carbs. I don't know if I told you the cookies or not. These cookies are less than two net carbs a piece. How about that? So, and that's what's for dinner. Thank you. Make sure you also leave in the comment box what you would like to see me create. And don't forget to tune in to the other videos that I have coming up soon. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. God bless. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.